Greetings, African people. I'm not sure how long this video is going to take, so please bear with me. But, you know, because there's so many things going through my mind right now, and I want to be as calm as possible when I have these discussions. No anger, no rage. Just asking questions and really thinking about things in the world. I was led to do some research this morning and after I was finished doing that research, it got me thinking about my life in Canada. I became a Canadian citizen 23 years ago and it was such a wonderful feeling when I took the oath and I became a Canadian. It just had a nice feeling. I wanted to make such a big difference in this space. So I was committed to being a good citizen. I volunteered a lot. I thought, what better way for me to contribute to the society that has given me the, the opportunity for education because that was the most important thing to me to this very day. And so I volunteered a lot in church, in the community, at a rec center, at a crisis center with people with mental illness, counseling them. I did that for a long time. Every opportunity I could fill a moment of my time when I was with my family, my children, I was giving of myself. And one of the things that I noticed is that Canadians, other Canadians would ask me, they would say, they wouldn't ask, where are you from? They would say, are you a Canadian citizen? And I would say, yes, and this is, but wh wh where are you from? And I would gladly say I'm from Jamaica. I had no shame. I wasn't ashamed of where I came from. But what I didn't understand in that question is why ask me from a Canadian, and when I say, yes, a Canadian citizen, and when I say, yes, I am, you dispute that by asking me where I come from. And I've also seen other black people who have had that question thrown at them. Are you a Canadian citizen? Yes, I am. Okay, so where's your mother from? Oh, my mother is Canadian. Yeah, but where did her mother come from? Somehow, uh, the white folks that I've encountered, and not all white people, but a lot, would ask you if you're Canadian. And then when you say yes, you are, they would reject that by asking you where you're from, where you're great, 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 great. They just never accepted it. And after a while, um, having some very negative experience, um, I eventually felt like... It was only on paper and that I was never accepted as a Canadian citizen. And so my pride in being a Canadian dwindled over time. I would never have ignored my ethnicity or my background, but it would have been nice to be able to include the Canadian experience in that. And I was not allowed to do that. So I stopped considering myself, you know, to be a Canadian because I felt like I wasn't accepted. Now, this research um, led me to search up John A. MacDonald. I think they said he's a founding father of Canada, Canada's first prime minister. And I had a question in mind when I went to do this research because I was led to it for what one reason or the other. But what I saw of the founding father, it's helping me to ask all the questions. So I'm going to read it. This article is written by this lady named Lisa Jackson. She's a journalist and a traveler, whatever that means. She said, last January, the McDonald Bicentennial, Bicentennial Commission was criticized, criticized for celebrating the 199th birthday of Sir John A. Macdonald, the first prime minister of Canada. And they saw, you know, showed photos of party goers in, in period clothing, red face were posted on Twitter, triggering public debate about John's legacy. I'm reading it here on my screen, so please bear with me. This year, a young, a, this year, sorry, Sir John A. Macdonald inspired beer was launched to celebrate the heritage and greatness of being Canadian. Looking closer at the real history, should we celebrate Sir John A. 
as a beloved Canadian hero. The truth is, Canadian First Prime Minister was also responsible for genocidal and racist policies whose repercussions are still being felt today. Here are some PR landmines that the beer makers are hoping consumers will forget. McDonald's is the one who unified Canadians through land dispossession and cultural genocide. Yes, McDonald was the father of Confederation and expanded the Canadian Pacific Railroad. But before you put on your party dress, remember that McDonald resorted to some hella, and she has some choice words, Sir John A. McDonald and his government saw First Nation and Metis communities as barriers to Confederation and the railroad. They sought to remove indigenous nations from their land and eliminate their way of life. So they got busy in acting legislation. First came the Gradual Civilization Act of 1857. The name of this legislation is pretty hilarious given that McDonald was notorious for binge drinking and getting wasted in public. And then she has her own personal, sometimes I don't like when um, uh, journalists do this. You, you hear, I wanna hear the facts. I don't wanna hear too much of your own personal feelings. And you know, this is a white lady that's writing this article. You know, I wanna hear the facts. I don't wanna hear how she feels these people, they're drunks or not. That's not, that's not what I wanna hear. Um, then she talked about how he aman amended an act to ban cultural ceremony ceremonies such as potlatches and sun dance because they're scary and pose with a huge threat to settlers. So here she's saying the First Nations were no longer allowed to celebrate using their, you know, cultural ceremonies because they were scaring the settlers. Um, then McDonald's used starvation to clear Western lands for white settlement and the railroad. Sir John McDonald is responsible for implementing the official government policy to force assimilation as known as a residential school system. He was responsible for hanging freedom fighter, Louis Riel and eight other indigenous uh, individuals. He applied racist ideology to public policy and on and on and on. The idea of this video is not to generate hate. This is where I'm confused this morning. This is the part where I'm torn. Um, this, this video is going somewhere, but, but when I read an article like this, that is written by a white lady, I'm wondering what is the point of this? When you write this article, are you doing it because you are trying to disgrace Sir A. McDonald? Are you trying to tell the truth about Canada's history and the things that they have done to the First Nation people so that things can be made right? Or you're doing it to get individuals to speak, flush out individuals to say what's on their mind, let them err by believing that you're being genuine because some this stuff here is upsetting. She, she talks about um, that in 1885, Electoral Franchise Act in the House of Commons, John A. proposed that Chinamen should not have the right to vote on the grounds that they were foreigners and alleged separate species. The Aryan race will not wholesomely amalgamate with the Africans and the Asiatics. And the cross of those races, like the cross of the dog and the fox, is not successful. He amended the legislation to exclude a person of Mongolian or Chinese race. This is very offensive. And so over the years, I think sometimes I might come across as somebody who's a racist because I spew and talk things that individuals such as this lady writes. It thinks that baffles me. What is the point of writing this article? Are you upsetting individuals or you're mocking individuals? Are you trying to provoke people to come out and be hateful? You see, it's not good to be hateful. It's not good for us to really live in the world where we're always talking about what people do to us. But when the individuals that are accused of doing certain things continue to do those same things, you don't know what to think. And then you have someone reminding you in, you know, history is good and we need to know, but what is the point of this article? Why do I know that the first prime minister of Canada saw me as a dog and that it wasn't, is not important. It's not good. It's not great for him to accept me in his space. Is this true? And okay, so that's the legacy of the forefathers. And I, the article goes on to say that, you know, you have to be thoughtful 
that this gentleman at that time was a racist because everybody else in that time was a racist as well. And it goes on in detail about the First Nation people. Now, I looked this up. I know so much about the First Nation people. I have del been deliberate in doing my research on them and studied extensively the history of some of the First Nation people. And it breaks my heart. It really does. But I want to say something about our new Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. His father, in my mind, was a great man. He really was a good man. I, like I said, I don't know behind closed door what he was, but I just know that he's responsible for a Jamaican being here. I am a Jamaican and he was responsible for us being here and he never treated us badly. They, they, it, you know, I, I, I really feel like that was one of the best prime ministers Canada had. And I think Justin is starting out to be one of the greatest prime minister that Canada has ever had if he continues on the path that he's on. Since this gentleman has won, he has really earned my respect and it's growing. My hope is rising. When I hear him make announcements about war, you know, it's so obvious that this guy doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to get involved with war. He's not like that. He's a new generation, a person who has feet heart. He's a young man. And, you know, I was surprised when I saw his age because I thought he was a lot younger. And I attribute his good looks and his youthfulness to the fact that he has a good heart. So he came out and read, you know, and told the First Nation people his views about their position and what's happened to them over the years. And it moved me to tears. And, you know, I don't trust the white people. I don't because of experience that I have had. I have no shame in saying that I'll go in front of the parliament and I say I have problems with trusting white folks because of bad experiences that I've had, but not just my own experience. What I see happen to the First Nation people, what I see happen to so many people in the world. It just seems like there has been some bad blood and some dirty water under the bridge over the years and the white folks have really done some bad things in the world. Now, they're not the only ones who've done bad things. As a people, as a human family, we've done bad things. But I don't know why I keep seeing the repetition of uh, white folks doing things. Are they lying on white folks? But the thing is, it's white people who come out and tell you these things. And I don't quite understand why. Why are we getting this information? Are you telling us something that we can do anything we want to do and get away with it? Now, Justin Trudeau has my respect at the moment because he didn't just come and talk fancy words and beat around the bush. He actually acknowledged what has happened to the First Nation people. And he's very sincere. There's something in the way he speaks. He's hurting. And my worry is that every time you find a good person in the world, every time you find someone who has a good heart, who wants to do good, they get a lot of fights. And so he has all these aim and goals. And I don't think they're just fantasy. I really think that he's going to do a lot of things. I think he's going to change the face of politics. I really think he's going to definitely change the experience of the First Nation people. And for that, I am so moved. Because we complain as a people of color what have happened to us with slavery. And our pain is not minimized. But when you think of the place that you live in, North America, and see how you come from all places in the world, and you come here and you make something of your life. In America, people become wealthy who would have otherwise lived in poverty from where you know, all the different places that they come from. And in Canada, people have come from many places in the world, from India and Pakistan and China, and has amassed wealth. And in this very same space, the First Nation people dwindled and suffered and lived in poverty. And that is one thing. But these individuals are so peaceful. How can you war? Even over the years when we were kids, we would see the stories or the movies of Indians and chief and how the Indians were bad people. And when you think about it now that you're older and you know better, they were not. They were defending their territory. Individuals came to their space and they were very kind these individuals and they treated them badly 
and they were demonized and presented as this I don't know as this what monster in these movies and now we hear a young man a young white man is coming forward and saying what has happened in your life I am going to try to correct it I'm going to make wrongs right he's saying to these people and I could feel the energy in that room you know the years of suffering the pain that they have experience of being let down in their own country by white people and this new prime minister is looking them face to face and not pretending like it didn't happen he doesn't have to say i'm sorry and apologize but based on what he's saying to them he's is telling the truth about what has happened to them and how he's going to go back and change all the laws and the things that affected them how he's going to go and take a look at how these aboriginal women have mi been missing and murdered and no one cared we can be so selfish people because we just think about what happened to us but every time I feel like complaining about my situation, I always think about the First Nation people. And I say, Justin, you're the nicest white person I know. And I don't know you. But I see that you have a heart and that your father was a good man and that his offspring is also a good man. And I hope that you'll find the strength within you because as you go forward, you're going to be faced with a lot of negativity and people who don't understand what it is to be good. Thank you on behalf of the First Nation people. I am thankful. I am grateful. And my hope is rising. I'm dedicating this poem to the First Nation people. And Justin spoke to them yesterday and it came to me. I thought of this poem. I thought it was fitting. I wrote it for the First Nation people and I think it's fitting. Marimba. Though it feels like midnight, soon it will be the break of day. I hear the silky voice of change whispering at my door. I see velvet channels opening. Surges of fire are kindling within my soul. I feel the power of my ancestors ignited within. Jagged edge fears begins to emerge. Marimba, she whispers, I am divine. Slowly she beckons the twilight, she transforms the night. Lightning and thunder is followed by flashes of colorful light. Voices echo strange but familiar melodies. The music eases the sting of yesterday's past. The journey is decided. Tomorrow is about to begin. I close my eyes and all is still. Doubts have disappeared. Marimba, she says again, rise up, rise up. She commands my blue morning and orders my day. The dragon now sleeps. Set aside the shattered veil. Open your eyes. Marimba, she says, wake up. It's the break of day. Look into the crimson light. Fire and darkness no more I see. Broken memories falling like rain. Silence, pain disappear with the shadows. Desire once hiding, now slowly rising. Silver moon drifting beneath the southern sky. Change is coming. Marimba, I cry. Change is coming for the First Nation people. A new generation of white power is emerging, one that is welcomed, a change that is welcome. Job well done so far, Mr. Trudeau. My respects. Be blessed, everybody. Think on these things.